has always been there. Thank you, Santa. Ah, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What was that? I need someone to show me my place in all this. This looks horrible. Um, being completely honest here, when I wasn't, I was never a huge, obsessive, large Star Wars fan. But when it was announced that they were making a Star Wars Episode Seven, it was that's one of the most memorable days of my life. How could you not be excited for the new Star Wars movie? I mean. Uh... The trailer came out, I remember the, the teaser trailer came out, and everyone was, you know, gripped and amazed. So excited at the prospect that they were making another Star Wars movie, and everyone was. The whole climate of my town, of the country, of like everywhere leading up to the release of that movie was such a monumental and really formative time in my experience. Like, I will honestly never forget that. Leaving the movie theater, and it wasn't as an immediate kind of gut reaction. I left and I went, oh uh, yeah, that was fun. Like every, you know, most people were like, oh my god, it's great. But the thing with The Force Awakens is, this is how I think about it, is that the film is so forgettable that it's unforgettable. And the more I uh, thought about the movie and kind of what happened, like, and started to think about the motivation behind it and a lot of the material, the marketing surrounding it. It just started to make me feel very gross. Because of how monumental the original trilogy was and because of how powerful it was, it heralds itself and it has this reputation of being this artful masterpiece of fun and adventure and interesting characters and gritty realism, you know? Like, that was like what Star Wars was. And so when you bring a new one and it's and it's eerily like the cookie cutter assembly line films today, people are like, what is this? Like when we had heard that, oh, J.J. Abrams is directing the new Star Wars movie. You know, he directed the reboot of Star Trek and the reboot of Star Trek was like, yeah, it was really good. It was a lot of fun. It was full of energy and excitement. And we were, everyone was like, oh, maybe he'll bring that to Star Wars. And it was just not unique or interesting. People are given these huge properties. Um, case in point, Colin Trevorrow. You know Colin Trevorrow? Everyone was like, no. And then they were like, come on guys, it's Hollywood's golden boy. Hollywood's dashing sweetheart, playboy director. So Colin Trevorrow was given the keys to the Jurassic Park franchise mobile after one very average movie called Safety, Safety Not Guaranteed, which was this indie movie. Um, I heard a little bit about it and I went and saw it. it was, it's fine. It's a fine movie. There was a, a few funny moments. And I watched it before I found out that Colin Trevorrow was even directing Jurassic World. Trevorrow makes one indie movie. Brad Bird recognizes him. Brad Bird obviously made The Incredibles and The Iron Giant. And he's a big success. He sees Trevorrow's movie he meets Trevorrow, and boom, just like that, Trevorrow's making Jurassic World. And then they were like, hey, guess what? He's also directing Star Wars Episode Nine. And then everyone was like, oh. It used to be this, this the ladder to Hollywood, you know? And the, the rungs were different for everyone. Obviously, it's filmmaking and getting into the industry and breaking in and making a name for yourself and manifesting your destiny. That's going to be a different process for everyone, and for most people it doesn't even happen. There used to be a ladder, but that ladder has changed into like a, the, like a step stool now. And it's just, it's, it's, in, it's not 
it's infuriating for me to be going into that kind of industry. And it's promising. Because who knows, maybe I'll make this successful indie movie, and then I'll be directing Star Wars Episode X. The Ben Quadanaro story. <laughs> Dis yeah, like I said, Disney's gonna be laughing their way to the bank because uh, even I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, Jabba the Hutt movie, that's so dumb. <laughs> like, the, the Ben Quadanaro standalone pod racing adventure is gonna come out in five years. Just because why not? Because people are gonna go see it. And the worst part is, I'm gonna go see it. So then I'm gonna be in, in the line at Regal with my credit card and paying $11.75 and oh, it's so dumb that they made this. You don't want to go see Star Wars to see how bad it's going to be. But I'm afraid that's what it's become. Uh, I can't wait to go see The Last Jedi to see how pedestrian and boring it is. There, there's a one chance left for them to do it. Because if The Last Jedi doesn't do anything interesting or bring anything new to the table that's actually risky or groundbreaking, then it's done. Then I'm then I'm personally I'm out. I do not need to invest my time with it. Obviously I'm still gonna go see the movies, but I'm not gonna care about it. Like I still do. Being happy does not really involve stepping out of your comfort zone. I think most American moviegoers, and I think that people just wanna be happy and they wanna see Star Wars. Hello guys and welcome back to Dylan's weekly Criterion cast. Today we are going to be talking about the Alfred Hitchcock 1940 Best Picture winner, Rebecca. This is starring Laurence Olivier and Joan Fontaine. Uh, Joan Fontaine plays kind of a, a young woman who's been kind of swept up in love by Laurence Olivier, who's this mysterious Dylan. bachelor who... Yes, mate? Dylan. What? We need the camera. we got to record this. I'm working on my weekly Criterion cast. No, no, no. Seriously, seriously. This is. A, we can do this for the, for, the, for the documentary. Okay. Well, what's... Guess who my fucking hairdresser is. Who is your hairdresser? She, okay, so I was talking to her, so I told her that I was in filmmaking, right? And so, apparently, she is also the hairdresser of Colin Trevorrow. Wait, actually? Yeah, like, I shit you not, like, she actually does his hair. Well, because he, he lives in the area. Wait, actually? No, yeah, like, he actually, like, lives in town. That, it's, it's great, because she said that he's, he's really insecure about his hair. Because he says, like, Steven Spielberg, yeah, that's what he said. He said, like, Steven Spielberg looks really great in hats. And he can't wear hats, I guess. Well, how is any of this relevant to, to us, exactly? Well, I don't know. I was thinking, that, like, if we were, like, to talk to him for, you know, like, for the documentary. That'd be cool. Like, if we could get, if we could somehow get Colin Trevorrow, like, to interview him to see what he feels about it. Especially because he's directing episode 9. And he's gone from, you know, safety not guaranteed Jurassic World to this. To hear his input, like actually someone in the industry, because I feel like we need that. Yeah. We're, we're definitely lacking that. What if um, we can call his agency, who I don't know who his agency is. It's probably could, like William Morris or something. We could find it out, yeah. Don't you think how fucking cool that would be if we could get him to, if we talked to him for the movie? That would be cool. I think we should do that. Cool. Good afternoon, you've reached Ver, the talent and literary agency. This is Adam speaking. How may I be of assistance? Hi, Adam. How are you doing today? Hey, I am great today. How are you doing? Who's speaking? Um, uh, hi, my name is Dylan. I'm, I'm doing well today. Thank you, Adam. Very cool, Dylan. Very cool. Well, uh, what can I help you with? So, um, I am a film student. Um, and film student. Right. I'm, Very cool. Yeah, I'm, Very cool. I'm calling with my colleague, and we're uh, currently working on a documentary. All right, um, documentary. All right, that's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, we're working on a documentary about one of your clients, and we were hoping right, to... Our clients. All right, very cool. Uh, we were hoping to uh, maybe get an email interview, a phone interview, or maybe even an in-person interview, um, because we understand this person lives in our area. Oh, all right. In, in person, that's very cool. Uh, which uh, talent are you uh, referring to? Um, we're referring to Colin Trevorrow. We understand that he is booked with Colin, your agency. Colin Trevorrow, very cool, very cool. You know, he's making uh, Star Wars. Yes, yeah, we understand. pretty amazing. That's what I we love, understand. I love the last one, especially. Um, it was just, I just, I thought it was so good. Um, 
you would like to speak to his representation, is that correct? Um, ideally, yeah, that would be fantastic. All right, well, I can definitely forward you along to somebody that would be able to help you in that regard. Okay, um, that would be great. That would be perfect. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Let me do that right now for you. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Have a good day. You too. Please stand by while we transfer your call. Representative, please press one. For a list of more options, please press 394. For a brief period of time, the planet Uranus went by which name? Press 145 for George. Press 2786 for Samantha Elizabeth Johnson III. Press 4 for more options. Your session has timed out. Press 4 for more options. Goodbye. Well, that's not going to work. We're going to have to find some other way to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this exclusive, with a capital E, interview with Hollywood filmmaker Colin Trevorrow. Colin, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you for being on the program. We're really excited to have you here. So I say, let's just jump right into it. So you went from being a humble indie filmmaker to become one of the most prominent cinematic forces in Hollywood today. Now, how did you get here? Well, uh, you, you kidnapped me. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I'm here. That's not what we meant. It's all right, we can, we can cut that. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, what I think Dylan is trying to say is you go from being the director of a low-budget uh, time travel comedy that, I mean, was... Kind of horror. It really sucked. Uh, no one really saw it. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're the director of one of the most revered and hallowed film franchises in history. I mean, how does how does that happen? Who said that? Uh, I did. He did. No, 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 no. About it being the most revered and hallowed film franchise in history. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, um, I mean, the fans did. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, not used to interviews. Doesn't even turn his phone on. <laughs> you don't believe this guy? It's extremely unprofessional, Mr. Trevor. My hands have been bound. Did you get his phone? 
Yes. Anyway, what were your thoughts when you first received the call that you'd been chosen to direct the new Star Wars film? I don't know. You weren't excited? If being excited gets this bag off of my head, then yes. I was ecstatic. He doesn't even know. He just got this. What should we tell him? I don't know. Wait. What? Do you think he has Steven Spielberg's number? <laughs> uh, so, unrelated question. What if you were suddenly, I don't know, fired from directing the latest Star Wars film. You know, this is just a pretty standard yeah. boilerplate interview question. Honestly, I'd, I'd be relieved. <laughs> uh, why is that? That's ridiculous. It's every person's dream. It's more like a nightmare. Can you imagine for one second that an entire subculture, no, an entire country of people are looking up to you like you're writing the new book of the Bible. These people, they trust you with their happiness, their entire personalities, their self-worth. It's all based on some cheap sci-fi flick from the 1970s. Uh, it's actually a space opera. It's a movie. It's a fun, inconsequential movie. It's the one thing that people like you will never allow it to be. But it's more than that. Who said that? Who decided that Star Wars was more than a movie? Well, George Lucas certainly didn't. I certainly didn't. You did. You all made it a part of yourself, so when we try and do something different, it's unacceptable. You want to do an interesting news flash? Nobody else does. There's a reason why The Force Awakens made over $2 billion at the box office. I remember seeing that Star Destroyer fly on the screens for the first time in the summer of 77. I felt such hope and such joy. I knew then at that very moment that I wanted to make other people feel that way too. But what I didn't know was that it'd be impossible because of people like you. It's never gonna be enough. You want new Star Wars, new ideas? Great, you make it. Wait, does, does that mean that you're asking us to direct Star Wars Episode Nine? Yeah, if I get fired. Sorry, that was a kind of a long-winded answer to your oddly specific question, but uh, why, do, why do you ask? Would you be willing to sign a release for your appearance on this show? Well, uh, first of all, my hands are bound. And uh, second of all, no. Back to your previous question. Why do you ask? Well, that does it for our interview with Hollywood director Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, we're just, uh, uh, out of, we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great evening, and remember, stay safe out there.
Um, JJ Abrams is directing Star Wars Episode 9. Well, I guess we'll have to kidnap him too. <laughs> right. Like people will complain, oh, it's so dumb, they're doing a young Han Solo movie, as they buy their ticket. If you don't want to see the same, well, the problem is a lot of people do want to see young little Han Solo running around. Then he meets, oh, Chewbacca, and you're like, I know what that is. <laughs> is, it, is he gonna? <laughs> Is he gonna make the, the Wookiee sound? And then he makes the Wookiee sound and everyone in the theater goes, Yeah! Yeah! And everyone's crying. <laughs> oh my god! It's wonderful! No, oh, that was good. That was pretty great, yeah. Can I do it one more time? Just for like... I think we're good, honestly. I think honestly, we, we yeah. Have it. yeah. We need to shoot a few more things. Right, do you want to do it one more time? No, I think we're good, frankly. We have it all. <laughs> Michael, I have to go to work in like 10 minutes. Yeah, no, we have to shoot the rest of the scene. He has some things that. to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> who, you, who are you, One Republic? Yes, as One Republic has said, is it too late to apologize? No, Dylan, they weren't questioning the lateness of the apology. It, it is too late. It was too late. It's too apologize. It was, and it still is. Yes, it is. It's too late to apologize. Um. Yeah! Is it ever too late to be apologized to? Yes. Okay. That's like the same thing. Maybe for you it is. Star Wars! Star Wars! You go, there's all these man children just like writhing out the ground. Star Wars! Oh my god! Star Wars! Everyone's throwing their lightsabers around, and it's like something in a David Lynch movie. And it's just like, oh my god, make it end. There's everything just Star Wars. We stepped out upon the world stage here. I can't do Lincoln. Can't do Lincoln. We stepped out upon on the, the world, world stage here. Now, 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 now. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment. Oh my god, you know, I told people, like, yeah, I didn't think Force Awakens is very good. What? What are you... <laughs> the, the, the man-children start going... <laughs> what do you mean you didn't like Star Wars and Force Awakens? <laughs> so offensive. But... What, what was Colin Trevorrow's second major motion picture? His second major motion picture was Jurassic World. Okay. Which is the third highest grossing film of all time. What was Steven Spielberg's second major motion picture? <laughs> it's funny that you bring that up because that was Jaws, um, which was the highest what grossing was, uh, film of oh, all time. Uh, what was what was uh, George Lucas's second major motion picture? Don't do this to me. <laughs> what would you say? Well, what would you say if Ryan Johnson's new trilogy were to be about Ben Quatnaros? <laughs> I would Con laugh my the ass off. Racing Chronicles, <laughs> three film. Rise and fall of the Quadraros <laughs> dynasty. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd laugh my ass off for the longest time. What would you do if they made an E.T. reboot called BQ? Ben Quadraros. Okay, um, you basically covered everything that we covered in my interview. Yeah, I think we're done with this.